Hello everyone for another episode in our series. Today I'm very glad to present uh, a, a topic that uh, I have been asked a lot the past 15 years that I am an academic. So a lot of uh, friends of mine or graduate, sometimes master students, they are, are going to apply for a PhD. So they want from me a few tips and hints for their interviews. The same kind of similar applies for when you are an undergraduate and you're going for a master's interview if there is any or for you going for a job interview for your first graduate job. Uh, equally uh, a lot of PhD students are asking similar questions for when they go for the first research job at another university. So the kind of information I will give today is pretty similar for different types of interviews but I will focus more on PhD interviews and I will give you insight from both the academic who's trying to help his students as well as what I feel when I am sitting in those interviews and I'm interviewing students. So the first part which is about preparing well before you go to an interview. So most likely at that stage you know who is going to be in the panel um, because you're applying for a particular PhD and there might be an associated supervisor with that. So most likely the supervisor or even a couple of supervisors will be in the panel with an independent person chairing the panel as well as maybe there is an HR person. So the very first thing that you need to do as you can imagine is actually go and search about that academic, what sort of research is doing, uh, what kind of projects are undergoing, if there are other PhD students, what the other PhD students are doing and get to know more about the academic's work and whether he or she is collaborating with other academics, other institutions, just get more information about the environment that academic works. Of course, you need to know if the person is doing experimental or is doing more computational work or both, uh, ap applied sciences, so uh, have a good look at what sort of nature of research that person is doing. You can simply do that by looking at the academic web page of, of that professor, but also you can search for other kind of uh, research gate, Google Scholar, um, and go through the papers of the academic and find out about more. In some cases, it's good to look at the track record of the academic and how long that track record was developed, what sort of momentum that is in the group and um, what is the nature and the philosophy that, that they have. You can understand some of this information by just looking around about the academic. Very important thing is to find out whether there is any funding, associated funding for ongoing projects as well as the, if there is something related to the PhD. This is something that we'll discuss later on as well, things that you can find out through the interview but it's good to know in advance. A very crucial tip is to go and look for the other PhD students, where they're coming from, if they're funded. Sometimes a lot of information is provided, what sort of nature of PhD they're doing, if they're working together, if they're publishing together, uh, where they're publishing, how often they're publishing, do they go for the conferences as well. So it's, it's, it's good to get a more rounded uh, understanding of what the group does. You need to know a lot of information about your potential supervisor, not only in order to know what you will face when you will start a PhD if you are successful, but also to be able to respond to some of the questions that I will tell you just now. You have done your preparatory work and you are going for that interview, either physically or online, doesn't matter, it's exactly the same. So if you are planning to appear with your jumper or your pyjamas, please don't do. Just prepare exactly as if you were going for a proper face-to-face -face live interview. Even if the professors are a bit more relaxed, you are the one who's getting interviewed that day, so make sure that you are coming up with your best of yourself. Now, before we start with the questions, the very first thing that I would like to say is that you should do whatever you can to show that you're committed to a PhD. The main problem that we face with PhDs and sometimes even postdocs as opposed to getting a graduate job is that 
especially for PhDs, it is a bit of a long term, you're stuck with something in particular, so you're not really moving around too much, you're not getting paid that well, and is, is challenging. So there is always a risk that the student, the candidate, will drop out at some point. So we need to make sure from the interview that we get the right candidate and that person has the right mindset and philosophy and is not going to drop out the PhD, especially if the PhD is funded, is something that we definitely don't want to see. Of course, if there are beyond humanly controllable issues with a PhD, of course, that's an option, but we'd really try to find the right person who has a different philosophy and will complete successfully the PhD. So be serious, be certain, and whatever answer you're giving, just make sure that you really stick to the point. Now, the very first question that always comes in these kind of interviews is why are you going to do a PhD to begin with? What brought you to that side of the world? So here you have to show commitment and you have to show passion. You have to make sure that you really convey that message clearly and you are not there, as I said in a previous video, because you could not really find another job or maybe a job in the industry, but you really wanted to do a PhD from the beginning and you have been thinking about it for some time now. PhD is not a hobby, it's a career path. So that should be really clear. You should somehow convey the message that you will stick to it no matter what. And this is a career path for you. You want to develop, you want to explore, you want to grow through a PhD and further follow-up studies that you will do. You want to do a postdoc, you want to become an academic. That is not a catalyst. Doesn't mean that if you don't want to become an academic, you are not appropriate for a PhD. But these two sometimes really work well. Now, the second question you will get is why you want to do a PhD in this particular program? What excites you about this particular PhD? If there is a title, what excites you about this particular project? So this is where you should start also putting some research, like try to connect the research that you have done before in your undergraduate degrees, your master's degree, or even if you have done some research so far, try to talk about the skills that you have developed and the knowledge that you have relevant to the PhD as much as possible. Of course, you can discuss more about the whole idea of the PhD, if it's a very emerging topic, if it's uh, something where the market goes, if you see the, the impact, the potential of that project, definitely that's the right time to mention these things. Make sure that you don't over say things, you don't speak too much and you stick to what you're asked because there might be more questions that they will follow up on the topic anyway. The third question that comes more often is why this university? Why you've picked up this particular university and this particular group to do this PhD? And this is a bit of a tricky question because you definitely want to say some good things about the university that you're going in order to, to, to justify your choice, but you have to be a bit more detailed on that. You have to actually say that I've picked this university because of certain reasons. And these reasons, they should be associated to the group you're joining, the type of the work they do, the ethics that they follow, uh, the type of research, the actual topic, the market around, anything you can justify why in particular that university. If you just say, I want to join this university because it's in the top 20 or top 100 universities, or because I like that person a lot, this is not really helpful. You need to find more reasons to justify why you want to join that particular university and that particular group. Next, there are a few more personal questions and just be prepared to answer those. I know they can be tricky, they can be difficult to answer. For instance, they may ask you, tell us a few weaknesses and a few strengths that you've got. If we start from the latter, you should not be modest and actually explain what kind of strengths you've got, where did you develop those, if it's a skill set that you gained through certain exercises, say that and just give a few examples, that works well. Now for the weaknesses is a bit more tricky 
definitely do not say that you're perfect do not say that you don't have weaknesses because this is not true for anyone everybody's got weaknesses everybody's got a lot of things that they're not good at so try to say a few and make sure that the way that you express yourself is the right so instead of calling something a weakness you may say that I need more support in this kind of thing. So if, for instance, you're not good at program languages, you can say that I need more support in order to develop a software, but I'm good at computers and I believe that it will not take that long in order to develop those skills. So try to put it in a nice way and the outcome of what you're saying to be positive, but definitely accept and say that you have weaknesses. Or maybe you can give an example where you developed something and then you had to develop further skills to add in order to deliver the project. So these kind of examples are very useful in order to be able to demonstrate at the level you are to the people who are about to become your collaborators and your supervisors. So overall, my message is just be humble that the way that you express yourself is the right is one of these tricky questions that if we see someone is a bit arrogant or too modest it will ring a bell and we'll try to find out more about that personality as a follow-up of that question uh, it may be something like tell me a little bit more about yourself tell me about your achievements the ones that you are very proud of so always have in mind a couple of things that you know you can put them in front and you can say yeah i've done that but if you're applying for a phd degree you will not really mention something that you did when you were like on the sixth grade if it's that big yes it's fine but usually they want something which is very recent if not very recent is is definitely something that you've done in your studies so i'd rather say uh, that i worked all the summer in a in a project and it was quite challenging and i contributed in this way rather than just um uh, referring to an award that i got when i was 15 years old another kind of question that you may get in an interview is about the particular research especially if you have applied for a particular topic then they may ask you something like, do you know who are the main competitors of ours in that project? Do you know who are the worldwide leading groups uh, that they're doing research in the same area? Uh, can you name a few individuals or can you tell us a few state-of-the-art papers and what they have come up with? So I'm not really saying that you should go meticulously and study everything, but be prepared to give some good answers. What we're looking for is someone who has done the homework, who knows a little bit about the project. Now, my seventh question is about the resources that you will need for a PhD. So they will ask you about what do you think that you need to develop during your PhD, what sort of resources you are required, if you know that you have, again, a few weaknesses like what we discussed before and uh, how you are about to develop the skills for those and just talk a little bit about the research and yourself now. Sometimes the answer comes from non-academic skills. So you can talk about other skills that you've developed over a placement or sometime when you work in the industry or other activities that you do and how you will bring on those activities, those skills and knowledge to complete a PhD. So you may say something about that your management skills are excellent because of that project that you managed to deliver to show the evidence and you will apply the same set of skills at your PhD studies and you know that because you're very organized you will manage to deliver a PhD. It's not deal breakers. It doesn't mean that if you have one set of skills or a couple of them, you will succeed the PhD, but adds on what already has been discussed about yourself. And with that, there is another question which is dealing with the areas of training and development for yourself. So they may offer some opportunities and you should pick them up. Otherwise, you should say that I believe that I need to take a training on this, this and that. Maybe, as I said before, is a program language or is a computational modeling or is getting more 
knowledge about how a lab operates or something even more specific with the project so feel free to say these things again you show that you're really clear you know at what level you are you know what you don't really know but you are prepared and committed to actually get to know these things develop the skills work hard and deliver the very last thing that you may be asked like most of the interviews is what's next what do you plan doing after you graduate for a PhD? Most of the supervisors want to know whether you will continue the academia, you want to stay as a researcher or you want to become an academic, lecturer, senior lecturer later on. Uh, whether you are planning to go in the industry, there is nothing wrong with that. It's more a practical uh, question so they know whether they should expect after you graduate you will keep on publishing with them, you can keep contributing to the project or maybe you can go for a fellowship which is associated with the same group and the same work uh, so it's not a deal breaker it's just a practical question that they would like to know in advance and they may have already made some plans so it's good to know for them as well uh, the last few comments i would say is just try to be as uh, honest as possible try to be humble to give really clear answers Take a moment when a question comes, think about the answer and be quite direct. So don't really talk too, too much. Don't say too much irrelevant stuff. Being focused is definitely a good thing. And of course, as we always say, practice, practice, practice. So write down a few answers, try to learn as much as possible and ask a friend or a family member to ask the questions to you there's no particular way of we asking questions so it's going to be exactly the same thing and uh, make sure that you come out as friendly as professional at the same time with that said bye bye until next time